Hey, what's up, reefers? Here's part two of the great LG battle of 2016, and hopefully this is the last part. So number one, let me thank you guys for the positive ID on the Dino LG, because I think that's exactly what it was. And then let me just say that I know a lot of people are online right now looking for ways to beat this LG, and there are some recommendations here that actually worked for me. So I'll, let me tell you about my journey, and I'll also share what people recommended and what actually worked. So if you see the first part, I have some kind of LG infestation, which was identified as Dino LG. And after reading through all the recommendations and doing a little research, I decided to go for the three days light out. The recommendation is that you either put a heavy drape over it, or you cardboard tape it up, tape up your aquarium so no light gets through, and that's what I went with. Unfortunately, I threw out all the Amazon shipping boxes, so I, I had to find some cardboard box, and I went dumpster diving. <laughs> and I actually jumped into a dumpster to pull out some cardboard boxes, the stuff we do for our aquarium, right? So I sliced up the boxes, taped up my aquarium, made sure no light goes through, I unplugged my lights, I even um, taped up my sump to make sure no light gets in at all. And for three days, I have no idea what's going on with my tank. I did not feed my fish. I was worried, but I figured three days should be okay. I mean, the fish, the corals, during shipping, they go a lot longer than three days. So this is going to sound strange, but every day I'll kind of sit around the aquarium and I'll just sniff. This is my sniff test. Because I figured if something is going bad in the tank, it's going to stink. And that's when I kind of bored and kind of uh, deal with it first. But thankfully, within the three days, nothing went wrong. And there's nothing stinky came from the tank. And um, after the third day, I was kind of nervous. But I, I ripped down the cardboards. So I was really anxious as well. And to my surprise... It was, relatively, it was relatively clean compared to where it started, but there are still there are still traces of dino on the sand bed. Uh, it's like a light dusting, almost like somebody dusted some colored chalk on the sand, but it was pretty obvious that there's still dino. Uh, so this was after three days. Now, I wasn't sure if those are dead dinos or they're still active, but I went ahead and feed the fish and I turned on the light because I don't want them to go I didn't want them to go too long without um, uh, energy. So um, by the end of that day, the dino came back and it was coming back fast. Uh, I was I felt pretty defeated at that time, but I decided to deal with it the next day. Um, so I gave my fish and my corals uh, healthy feed, uh, healthy feeding, uh, because they went three days without food, and I made sure all the corals, clam, and anemone got enough light. So I went back to the drawing board, I did some more reading, and I looked up all the new comments that you guys made in terms of dealing with dino, and I got a lot more information. So after kind of digesting all these new information, I decided to go for light out again, but it's not just going to be a light out. I figured I'll try different things at the same time. I know it's kind of bad to do different things at the same time because I, do not, I would not know which is most effective. But at that moment, I just want to beat Dino as soon as possible, if it's even possible. So what I ended up doing is I went for Scorch Earth Moldy Prone Attack. I went for five days light out. And on top of that, I started dosing hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, uh, as a lot of you guys recommended. And I also started dosing beneficial bacteria, as some people recommended. So in my mind, um, from reading, I realized that hydrogen peroxide, it kills off algae, uh, specifically dino, uh, dino algae. But at the same time, the nutrient is still in the water, right? Something still needs to take it up. And I cannot do water change because water change seems to fuel the dino, uh, dino algae. So instead, I started dosing beneficial bacteria because they will compete with the dino algae for the same nutrient source. And I think that makes sense to me. Now, another viewer um, of this channel also mentioned that I do not have enough live rock. In the beginning, I didn't quite get what he meant, but I think now I understand what he meant. Um, 
in order to sustain these bacteria, they need a surface to live on. And because my aquascape is relatively open compared to uh, the more traditional wall-to-wall -wall, um, rockscape, I may not have enough surface area for these live bacteria to cultivate and grow. So I went ahead and ordered uh, 10 to 12 additional pounds from, uh, of dry, dry rock from Bulk Reef Supply, which unfortunately is not here yet, but it'll get here soon. So this is long term. But even without the live rock, um, live drive rock, I decided to start dosing beneficial bacteria as I started dosing hydrogen peroxide that will knock back the dino algae. Now, the dosage for the hydrogen peroxide is one milliliter per uh, 10 gallon of water. So I was putting in about four milliliter um, for my tank. It's a little bit under, under but I didn't want to overshoot. So here we go for five, five days of light outs. I tried to put the carpet box back the same way, but of course it wouldn't go back the same way and there are some gaps. So I look around the house and it just so happened that my ex-girlfriend left her comforter cover in my house. And that's unfortunate for her because I used it for my tank. So for five days, um, I was dosing hydrogen peroxide. I was dosing beneficial bacteria. I'm circling my tank and like sniffing it like a madman. Uh, this time I, I got a little bit smarter. I made it so that I can open the sump cabinet door, which I couldn't before. So at least I was able to kind of like take a quick peek in and make sure everything is okay and the skimmer is not overflowing. And it's not. So after five days, which actually turned into more like a five and a half, six days because I was busy on the last day, um, I once again pulled down the comforter cover and I took down all the cardboard and oh my gosh I have not seen my sand this white actually ever I don't even remember my sand being this white in the beginning it just is like pure white it's crazy uh, so obviously the dino algae is completely gone I don't see any trace I don't even see a dusting and it has been actually one and a half day already with uh, two photo periods and I think they're, seriously, I think they're gone. The interesting thing is that on my glass, there's still a little strip of um, algae. These are not dino, dino algae. These are just like regular algae that you scrape off the glass. It did not grow nor recede. This kind of tells me that the hydrogen peroxide is not really affecting more, uh, more complex algae. Um, it seems to just be affecting the dino in terms of uh, bad algae. But don't take my words on it. This is just what I observed in my tank. Now, not everybody's happy with the hydrogen peroxide dosing. Um, and I know this coming in because one of you guys mentioned that uh, my crustaceans, especially shrimp, may not be too happy with this. And sadly, I have not seen or heard my pistol shrimp in the last 1.5 days. Um, in terms of coral, for the most part, they are okay, except for my kryptonite candy cane coral. If you see in the video, um, one or two of the polyps are receded, receded pretty badly actually. It's about two thirds receded, but I'm not too worried because candy cane is such a strong coral. Um, as long as there's a little bit of tissue left, I'm sure it's going to um, recover. Now, everything else seems okay. Um, my gorgonian is unfortunately receding, but this happened way before I started doing the light out. And I think it's probably due to the dino algae issue. It's covering the tissue and it's not getting the full extension. So I think I may have to pull it soon or frag it up first. It's kind of sad because I really like Gorgonians. In terms of equipment, it's we got some like weird damage. Like the top mesh that I keep on for to keep fish from jumping out, it seems to have warped whether from the weight of the comforter and cardboard or just like the humidity of everything trapped in. Uh, so it's kind of like sagging into water now, so I have to look into fixing it. And also, my sump light is just gone. Um, the Aqua Mini, which I actually really like. I think with everything covered up, it's just too humid in there, and the moisture must have gotten to the uh, the circuitry. And it just is, is behaving really oddly. It will flash and then the LED is going to display some weird things. Like the time, they'll give me a dollar sign. I'm like, what? Time is money? 
so I'm just kind of drying it out. I think maybe there's like salt creep in there too. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna throw the light out anyways. So there's nothing to lose. I just rinse it in fresh water and just letting it dry. If it works, great. If not, I'm replacing it anyways. So that's that's okay. But uh, that's in terms of livestock and equipment affected by this past uh, week and a half. Those are it. Um, and I'm just so happy that Dino is gone. I know you guys mentioned that it may come back when I least expected it. When I thought I beat it, it will come back. Um, I'm seriously crossing my fingers. If it does come back, at least I know that there's so many different methods of trying to beat it. Um, I have There's still a couple methods I have not tried, like raising the pH as well as using a uh, air stone to create micro bubbles. But I just want to seriously thank you guys for giving me all these ideas. Coming into this, all I know is that, okay, I heard that light outs works. Um, and But that's the only thing I know. And I I even don't even know how many days I should have a have the light out but having you guys chime in right especially people that have dealt with this before and made all these great suggestions really really helped me give me confidence to go forward and it, you guys actually told me exactly what to do and you guys are exactly right i mean it works at least for, for now right knock on wood um so hopefully they're gone for good the dino i'll just hopefully it's gone for good uh i'm gonna keep up with the husbandry um, I just swapped it out, the phosphate, uh, the phosphate, what, absorber, phosgard, I think it's called. And um, I swapped out the carbon, active carbon, and I actually have on order a uh, 100 micron filter sock and also a filter sock holder coming in because I was expecting, I wasn't, I wasn't too sure if I can beat the um, Dino LG this time. And I was going to Go this again, except for like go even more hardcore with like you know trying the uh, micro bubble as well as uh, use the filter sock to catch all the free floating dino algae. Oh, speaking of free floating dino algae, actually, what I heard I'm not sure if this is right or not is they're saying that the hydrogen peroxide targets actually, I'm not sure if it's right, so I, never mind, well, I shouldn't say it because I'm not even sure right now. Um, if I if, I'm not sure if I remember right, so I'll, I'll just skip that. But anyways, um, the point is, I want to really seriously thank you guys for giving me all this information so I can go in and deal with this issue. Um, I know I ramble a lot in my brief videos. I just can't help myself. I just keep talking. But I'm really, th really thankful that you guys actually sit through all my rambling and actually, <laughs> actually remember what I talked about and provided such helpful information. I'm just really, really grateful. So hopefully this is the last video that you see titled as Great LG Battle. Um, whether it's 2016, 2017, I hope there's no more titles called The Great LG Battle of X. Uh, and this has been a really long video, but I'm actually really, I'm, I'm really happy that this is finally over. I can just relax and look at the tank again. So I'll end it right here. And once again, thank you guys. And if you have any question re regarding fighting Dino LG, uh, I will recommend first looking through um, the two or three previous videos. There are a lot of great comments and great suggestions in there. And if you do not find an answer there, feel free to leave a, leave a comment. If I cannot answer it, I'm sure a lot of people will chime in as well. And we can beat this together. All right, guys. Have a good rest of the week, and I will talk to you guys later.